Hello, this is question 11 from paper 1-2 from the summer exams in 2020 from Cambridge International Education. In the description below this video, you'll find a link to an image of this question so you can attempt it before looking at my solution. Now, this question all revolves around a circle. Sorry for that pun, revolves around a circle. And it asks us lots of questions about it. It gives us the equation of a circle. Now, when you have the equation of a circle, you know absolutely everything there is to know about a circle. You just need to know how to unlock it. We have two formulas for circles. One of them looks like this. And just from this, we're able to read the center of the circle. These numbers, half of this number and change the sign. Half of this number and change the sign. So I already know the center of the circle is actually here. It's a little more complicated than with um, this number. But I'll show you another way to do that anyway. I think it's a more common way to do it. The other formula for a circle uh, we tend to use is x minus h squared plus y minus uh, k squared. I might have got these letters wrong. I often do. Let me double uh, check on that. No, it's h and k they tend to use is equal to r squared. Now, if I use this knowledge, this would be quite quick. Um, I can just put these numbers in. But uh, a better way to do it would be, have a think, how do we get from here to up here? x squared is going to get an x squared. Um, h by x and another h by x will have 2hx. That's where I actually got that bit of knowledge. So what number must be here to get an 8? So um, if it was a 4, 4 times x and x times 4 make 8x. And if it's a plus there, so this will work if it's a h, x minus 4. So h is plus 4. That's where we get that from. Uh, let's see. Now, <clears throat> that does lead us a problem. Now there's a 16 going to appear that's not up here. We'll deal with that in a moment. Let's ask ourselves, what number must be here to get a 4y? Well, that'll be 2. 2 times y and y times 2 will get 4y. They'll both be minus though, so we'll get minus 4. So I need minus minus 4, minus minus 2, which is plus 2. Okay, um, now the problem is this will have an extra 16, plus 16, that I don't want. It wasn't here. I don't know. I invented it, so I better take away that 16 that I just invented. And um, it'll also have a 4 I just invented. So let's take that away. And it, it did have a minus 5 already. So this line um, is the exact same as this line here. I just added in an extra 16 to make this work. I added in an extra 4 to make this work. And then if I added it in over here, I took it away here. So that's where that comes from. Now um, this then tells us, if I rearrange this, just bring this over the right side of the equals, uh, minus 20, minus 25. If I just put in equals 25, that, that means or is equal to 5. So that's one of the ways to do it. Uh, although there is a formula for this number, we call it C, and uh, I can't remember it offhand. Let me see. I have it here. It's um, R is equal to the square root of G squared plus F squared minus C, all in the square root, where uh, G is minus this number and F is minus this number. That works as well. That's another formula. You're given all these formulas in your formula tables. I like this way though, the best. Okay, so that answers part A. Part B asks, show that the equation of a tangent to the circle at P is, and it gives the answer to that equation. Oh, they give us the point P. Let's draw this circle in that case. Um, here is a circle and here is the center. We have four minus two and point P is at one, two. Now, usually I just tend to put like the point anywhere I want um, because we can just twist our head around. But to help answer part C, it would be useful to draw this more correctly. And I guess we could always do that anyway. If this is four, we know the radius. I actually know loads of points now in that case. I put all of these points in, for example. This guy would be four minus seven. Have a think why that is. It's radius five and it goes straight down. This here would be four um three for three this point here would be and um, five more than this nine <laughs> that's g nine and minus a two 
and this guy over here would be minus one and minus two. So I can actually put in lots of points, but they want the point one, two. So where is one, two? Let's see, there's four, there's minus one. One is about here, um, and then this is minus two, so plus two. It must be right around here is the point one and two. This is P. This P. You don't need any of the others. I was just trying to show you how you could draw this. And I'll rub it out because it probably will get in the way in a while. So we have a tangent at this point here. Tangent there. And they ask us, show that the equation of this tangent is 4y equals 3x plus 5. So basically find the equation of this tangent. And hopefully it's the same as the one they told us. So how do we get the equation of a tangent? It's actually quite straightforward. Because we know two points on this line. So we can get the slope of this line. That will give us the slope of this line. And once we have a slope at a point, we have an equation. So let's do that. Let's find the, the slope of this line here. I'll call it m prime. Just need to call it something. So we'll say uh, this y minus this y. So 2 minus minus 2 is 4. Uh, 1 minus 3 is minus 3. So that's the slope of this guy. The slope of this line... If we multiply by this is minus 1, that's a rule we remember. Basically the thing every, most students though remember is turn it upside down and change the sign. So the sign becomes plus, we don't have to write it in. 3 over 4, that's the, the slope of this guy. We have a point, so we just use the equation of a line. There's a couple of ways to do it, I, I like to use this one. y minus y1 is equal mx minus x1. I just fill in the points. I know x1, y1, and m. So I just fill these in. y minus 2. I got that 2 there. It's equal 3 over 4. x, and I'll take the 1 here. Minus 1. And that's the equation of a line. It doesn't look like there is. So let's play around with it first and see if we can change that. Multiply everything by 4. Is equal to uh, 3 times x, 3 times minus 1. And we get, uh, I'll squeeze it in here, 4y is equal to 3x. This turns into a plus, so 8 minus 3 is plus 5. And that is, that is the equation they told us. That's what they wanted it to look like. So we have confirmed that. Now for part C, in part C they tell us there's a point Q that lies on PQ. Here's P up here. PQ, and it's parallel to the x-axis. That's why I actually drew this one nice and nice, nice and correctly. Because the x-axis, here's minus 2, here's the x-axis somewhere in the middle there, at 0. So I know now know Q must be right there. That, that's why I actually drew this a bit more exactly. But this is um, the way you would solve this question. I'm sure there's a few other ways now that I think about involving the slope maybe or something. Anyway, I'll, I'll show you the way I know how to solve it. So if we know this point is 1, 2, I already know something about this point. It's something 2. We already know a lot about it. Um, we, they ask us then, it's parallel to that, right down the core, the tangents of the circle at P and at Q. So they're talking about this tangent here. And they want the... Oh, they want the coordinates of... Sorry, Q... Q is the point that lies on the circle. Okay, they want you to write down the coordinates of Q. Oh, I see. I'm missing part D on, um, on, my, on what I'm looking at here. So we can just get this number straight away. Because if we have a think about what the middle is here, I'll draw that out again. Here is P. Here is Q. Um, and this is perpendicular. We now know this is equal to this, this is equal to this. We can see this from geometry. So I know uh, this point here, this is 1. This guy is 4, so there's 3 distance there. There's a 3 distance here. So this guy must be just 7. This, I'm talking about the x numbers here, by the way. 1 on the x-axis, 4 on the x-axis, 7 on the x-axis. And you can see that from symmetry. You can see how symmetrical this is here. If this is 3, this must be 3. Um, so if this is 4 to 1, this must be 4 to 7. So we already know what Q is. 
What was confusing me, I've now changed my screen, is the next question, part D, asks us to find this point here. And that's a little trickier. It's not too tricky. This is the one, I'm sure there's different ways to solve it, um, involving these triangles, maybe something to do with the slope. Um, because we have lots of information about this triangle. Uh, I Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a way to solve it. Let me use that way, actually. Uh, we'll solve it. Let's use this triangle here. I'll, I'll draw it one more time. A bit bigger and I'll only draw half of it. Here's P, here's this point here in the middle, that's a right angle, here's T up the top and we know this is length 3. Really all I need to do is find the length of this because I know lots of things about this point. I know it's, the point is at 4 and something. I just need to know how how far up this is and this, guy, this line here is 2 so I just need to know how far above um, above two it is. So I need three things about a triangle. I know what this angle is. This angle is, we, they give us the slope. We know the slope. Slope tells me everything about an angle really. And it's three over four. An angle is just the tangent of the angle. That's what a slope is. So this angle in here is known. And it's very convenient as tangent because look what, the one we're looking for is X. So if I say the tangent of it here, uh, let me put it up here, the tangent um, of this angle must equal x divided by 3. So it's quite easy to solve x, especially because tangent of the angle is simple enough, 3 over 4. So 3 over 4 is equal to x divided by 3. Let's rearrange that, multiply both sides by 3. We get x is equal 9 over 4. That's it. That's a 2.25. 2 this height here is 2.25. This height here is 2.25. It's just 2 higher than this guy. So it's just 4.25. Or a better way to write that would be 17. Uh, let me just write it again here. 4, 17 over 4. To leave it in a fraction, either either is fine. Um, so that's uh, another way to do this question. By the way, is if you just did the same thing as you did earlier, get the equation of this line, the equation of this line. When the two equations, um, the solution for the two equations will be this point here. So that's another way to do it. I think this is a much a better way. Um, I'm sure there's maybe other ways involving geometry or something. Let me know in the comments if you did find any other ways. Also, let me know if you didn't follow any of that. I think it's a bit of a mess there. I apologize. Voice is going as well. Um, thanks for watching and have a great day.